Good morning, everyone. I'm Jasmine Walton, Community Engagement Coordinator for NeighborWorks Salt Lake. And today I will be acting as your moderator for today's event. Um, I wanna welcome you all to the Westside Transit Town Hall. And today we'll be hearing from Salt Lake City and UTA staff about all of these amazing Westside Transit projects that are happening. Um, to start us off, we will do some introductions and then get into a, a nice presentation and then have some Q&A at the end. So to get things started, um, we will hear first from Kyle Cook. Hi, everyone. My name is Kyle Cook. I'm an engineer with the Salt Lake City Transportation Division. Uh, I'm actively leading several West Side transportation efforts in various stages from planning to construction. So I'm happy to be here talking with you about that today. Um, I most often use the Trax train to commute, which I enjoy because I love staring out the window, watching the world go by, and, and people watching. Thanks, Kyle. Next, we'll hear from Laura Handworker. Hi, everyone. I am Laura Handworker. I am a transportation planner with Salt Lake City Transportation Division. Um, and I love using transit because it gives me so many options, and I love really having options available to me when I'm trying to get around the city. Thanks, Laura. And next, we're here from Susan Landworker. Oh, Susan Lundmark. <laughs> That's oh. Hi. Hi. I'm Susan Lundmark. Um, I am also a transportation planner with Salt Lake City Transportation Division. Um, and I really like transit because to me, being mobile is kind of the same as being free. Um, and as a younger kid in my younger days, I took transit and the train a lot to get around and it felt very freeing. Thanks, Susan. Sorry for butchering your name. <laughs> and last but not least, we're here from Eric Collison. I'm Eric Callison. I'm the manager of service planning for UTA. My favorite thing about transit is it gives me the opportunity to do other things like read, read the news, uh, check my phone instead of looking at the taillights of the car in front of me everywhere I go. Thank you. All right, so to kick things off, we'll hear from Kyle Cook first, but I want to remind you all as we're going through these presentations and taking questions and answers at the end that you can also ask your questions today by putting them in the comment box below this Facebook Live. So with that, I will turn the time over to Kyle. Wonderful, thank you. And can we go to the next slide, please? Here we go. So just to start us off, uh, Salt Lake City has a lot of transportation projects in the work on the west side. We're actively implementing projects like the 300 North pedestrian bridge over the railroad tracks and doing traffic calming on 5th North in the Fair Park neighborhood. Uh, we're working on actively imp implementing plans like the bicycle and pedestrian master plan. Uh, for example, the neighborhood byway, byway at 13th West between Rose Park and Glendale. And we're creating a pipeline of projects through corridor studies on 6th and 7th North, 10th West, 3rd North, and projects like the North Mobility or North Temple Mobility Hub, which we'll talk about here in a bit. So with all that too, we're actively taking lessons learned from the West Side Transportation Equity Study so that we can do a better job communicating and engaging with our West Side neighbors. So we're here today talking about transit on the west side. And many of the services that we're talking about are not necessarily opening up tomorrow or next week, but soon. And we're mid stride in bringing these services and changes to life. So it's important for us to share this with you for three reasons. One, we want you to understand how UTA and the city are investing in areas that aren't always highly visible. So think about a new bridge or a road compared to something like late night or frequent bus service. Uh, two, we want you to know what's coming so you can plan accordingly. Uh, a lack of awareness and understanding can be a major barrier to transit use. And so as we're trying to promote a culture of transit use, we're doing that through education and hoping to increase the number of people riding. Uh, and the third part is that we love to hear from you. So let us know what you think. There are a number of active common opportunities and resources available to get you involved in helping to influence investment in your neighborhoods. So fundamentally, owning a vehicle isn't the best option for everyone. Obviously, not everyone can drive due to age or physical abilities. 
And being solely reliant on a private vehicle has some downsides. So think of this example. Transportation is a major component of basic household costs. So for some people who are solely reliant on a vehicle to get to work or to run errands, the expense can be too much. So as transportation costs start to erode the budget that could be used for basics like food, clothing, medical care, and also fun stuff like recreation. So it's part of our mission to enable more travel options in part because people's lives are complicated and there really just isn't a one size fits all solution for getting around. The more options also give the ability of people to decide how best to use their limited transportation budget. And from our perspective, transit is a big piece of that puzzle. So I just want to acknowledge that people have been advocating for transit improvements on the west side for a long time. And this is part of the reason we're excited to be talking about it. The reality, though, is that it can take a long time for everything to get into place. The funding needs to be worked out. We need to think about how the new service fits in with the overall regional system and make adjustments where services are disconnected or redundant. Staffing and equipment needs to be in place. So thinking about our bus drivers and buses. And on top of that, the fact that we need physical bus stops where they don't already exist today. So with all that in mind, let's get into the details and have Laura talk with us about specific bus system changes. Thanks, Kyle, for that introduction. Um, so a lot of these changes that Kyle was talking about are coming around because of Salt Lake City's desire to expand the frequent transit network, um, otherwise known by its extremely catchy acronym of FTN. Um, so the FTN is all about having more frequent service for more hours. Um, and the idea is to build off of Salt Lake City's existing grid network that really works in our favor because we can have these parallel routes running all throughout the city um, at many, many hours during the day and even into late night. Um, the minimum level of frequent transit service when we talk about that um, is that it comes for at least every 15 minutes, Monday through Saturday during sort of the peak hours of the day. And then it will come every 30 minutes, at least every 30 minutes during early mornings, as early as 4 a.m., late nights, as late as midnight or 12.15, and then on Sundays as well. And so based on Salt Lake City's transit master plan, the long-term vision for the FTN is to offer frequent and reliable service connecting major destinations and neighborhood centers seven days a week throughout the day and evening. So Eric Callison will jump in now, I think, and talk a little bit more about some of the specific changes that you'll see coming up. Yes, uh, thanks, Laura. Um, you can see this a beautiful map that Salt Lake City's prepared for us. Um, you can see these, these new lines. Currently, the service that we run in the Rose Park and Fair Park neighborhoods is uh, pretty circuitous. It doesn't go anywhere in a straight line for long. Um, we're excited to be able to offer some uh, additional connections as well as uh, more frequent, more direct service. As Laura mentioned, uh, this will be 15 minute service that runs um, early and late, give people a little bit more opportunity in terms of what times they can catch the bus as well as how often. And you can also see on this map offering additional connections just based on where the bus goes. Um, currently, these services only go into Salt Lake Central, and then you have to transfer to get anywhere else. Uh, but you can see on this map, the new Route 1 would connect these neighborhoods with uh, downtown as well as the east side of the city and uh, continue all the way to the University of Utah. <clears throat> and the extended Route 205. Uh, would serve downtown as well and, and then continue south on 5th East, which offers a number of east-west connections throughout the Salt Lake Valley all the way down to 4500 South. Um, so we're excited to be able to offer this improved service and these improved connections to West Side residents. Thanks, Eric. And I, this, is, this is Kyle. I would like to interject, maybe just go up a slide um, and we could talk a little bit about the, the bus stops themselves. Uh, we're obviously, as I mentioned, we have to have physical bus stops where we are introducing new service. And so on quarters like 10th North and 6th North, we, we really don't have the infrastructure in place. So we're in the 
process of developing a construction package for bus stops to be built in 2022. Uh, this, this package has about 70 stops, so it's a pretty major lift. Um, some of them will be upgrades, but a lot of them are completely new. Um, and this is, this, is, this is really exciting because while some of them where we're space limited, we'll be doing more simple park strip fills with a concrete pad and, and some basic amenities. A lot of the stops, because we do have such generous park strips in, in the Rose Park area along 6th and 10th North, we're able to provide um, bus stops with shelters um, and various amenities like bike racks, garbage cans, which are really intended to reflect the, the premium bus service. Thanks for that, Kyle. We're, we're excited to partner with the city on those bus stops as well. And having a good place to wait for the bus and, and having a shelter or a bench really does make a difference in your transit experience. If you've ever waited for the bus in the rain, like maybe this morning, um, you can definitely appreciate how that can improve your experience. Um, I'll kick it back to Lara to talk about uh, on-demand service as well. Thanks, Eric. Um, yeah, we're really excited about the upcoming launch of UTA on-demand service in the city's west side neighborhoods. Um, so this is going to be a new transportation service um, for Salt Lake City. It's something that UTA has implemented in other areas in the state. Um, there's currently a UTA on-demand program in Southern Salt Lake County that's been really successful and people really like it. Um, so we're hoping to, to replicate those results up here. Um, and as Eric mentioned, there are some sort of circuitous and inefficient routes over on the west side right now. And so the goal with this service is to replace those and have this more efficient and flexible service available to residents. Um, how it'll work is, as you can see on the slide here, um, it'll be smaller vans um, like this, rather than the full-size UTA buses that you see around town. Um, and there will be an app or a phone number if you don't have a smartphone um, or just prefer to, to call in to schedule your rides. And then you would be picked up we call it corner to corner service. So it's not door to door. It's not gonna come to your house and pick you up, um, but you would go to the nearest corner that the service provider via um, provides you and they will sort of trip chain with other folks who may also be in the area requesting rides on the way to your destination. Um, and so the service area is going to be the entirety of the western side of the city, but excluding the airport um, and some of the industrial areas further west. So basically the whole residential west side will be where the service area is, and you're able to request a ride and take these vans anywhere within that service area. Um, you're not required to go to a transit station, though we anticipate that many folks will use this as their first and last mile connections to get to Salt Lake Central or the North Temple Station, um, you know, to take the tracks or maybe the front runner, um, make some of those other connections, but you can also use it to just get to the grocery store or the library or any number of other, you know, community centers or go over to your family's house for, for the holidays or anything along those lines. Um, and we're viewing this service as an extension of the frequent transit network that I mentioned earlier in that the service days and hours are going to replicate those of the FTN. Um, so we're going to have service running Mondays through Saturdays from 4 a.m. to 12.15 a.m. Um, and then on Sundays from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. So we have those frequent, frequent service because we're also anticipating that your wait time for a ride would be kept under 15 minutes during, again, those same peak hours and then maybe up to 30 minutes during those really, really early or really late hours. Um, and then I would also like to plug that we're using, we'll be able to use hybrid vehicles um, for everything except for the wheelchair accessible vehicles. Those were harder to procure um, in, in a hybrid format, but we're trying to, to head in a more sustainable direction with our transportation. Um, so we're really, really excited about this program, being able to take advantage of those opportunities. Um, the service will launch 
pretty soon. Um, December 13th is the official launch date for the service and we're excited to have it up and running then. Um, and so you can, if you have an existing Salt Lake City Hive Pass or an Eco Pass through your employer or any other UTA Pass that you currently use, it will work on this service. There's nothing more you need to do. Um, and the, the fares for a ride, if you don't have a pass, it's gonna be 250 for, for each ride for a one-way ride. Um, so you can download the UTA On Demand app on either the Apple Store or Google Play. And that is how you'll, you'll coordinate your rides moving on forward. So we're really excited about this one. Um, unless, I guess, unless anyone has anything else to add, I will pass it along to Suze to talk about the upcoming North Temple Mobility Hub. Thanks, Laura. Um, yeah, I am the Salt Lake City project manager for the North Temple Mobility Hub project. Um, like I think everything that we are talking about here today, this is a partnership between Salt Lake City and UTA. Um, in order to find a place and um, a design, an initial design for a mobility hub, uh, which as the slide suggests is a place where different travel options can come together um, in terms of uh, walking and biking or shared mobility like shared rides or UTA on demand, assuming that it continues on um, long into the future. Um, where they can conveniently connect and people can easily get between modes. Um, these mobility hubs, they can be small scale where you might hardly even notice them um, because it's not a big train station or something like that, but they can also be larger scale with a building um, with indoor and outdoor space and sometimes other uses like small shops or community spaces. Um, uh, and like a lot of the things that we've been talking about, uh, the expansion of the frequent transit network is, is a big reason that a mobility hub is needed on the west side. Um, since that expansion includes all new routes that are going to help connect east and west across the city, um, people will need a place, and they do need a place, to connect um, from bus or train or other travel options. And also bus operators need a place to physically put the bus, um, you know, to, to wait for, to, for those people to connect. And also um, they need a place with break facilities, restroom facilities, um, bus turnaround, some of like the really basic things that you need buses to be able to do is something that we're hoping to accommodate um, here. And it's also a place for the buses as they become electrified in the future, which is one of the goals um, that that the city and UTA have, um, where they can also charge in these areas. I don't know, Eric, do you wanna talk a little bit about bus fleet electrification for a minute? Sure. Um, there's a lot of momentum toward electric buses uh, right now in Salt Lake City, as well as throughout the state of Utah. And uh, in order to achieve that, we need to have both uh, places to um, park those vehicles as uh, Susan just mentioned, as well as places to charge them while they're in the system. Um, and that charging infrastructure is best handled at places like this mobility hub. Um, so having some, some places to charge electric buses will allow us to run those buses um, throughout the city, but also you know, expect to see them in West Side neighborhoods as well. Awesome, thanks. Um, and one of the things I wanted to talk about too, just quickly is that when we talk about transit and transportation, um, sometimes the conversation goes a lot in the direction of like the vehicle, the bus or the train or the car. But in terms of all of these projects, including this hub, we really want it to be a place for people, um, a community gathering place, a place that people want to go, that they want to be um, where they're comfortable, where they're happy, <laughs> where there's something that, fits a need, um, it may be in addition to or over and above just their travel needs. So um, we're, we're attempting to be intentional about trying to understand what, what the community and the traveling, pu traveling public are looking for um, and how that might fit in design and construction and ultimately you know, opening a mobility hub like this. 
So right now, in terms of timing right now, um, both Salt Lake City and UTA are compiling construction funds to be able to be used. Um, at this point, it's looking like 2024 or later is when that construction would start um, in this area. And again, we're just really hoping um, for community input, community feedback as much as possible on this project. We've had some initial um, survey as well as a community advisory committee. Um, and what we've heard is that there is a desire um, so far in the community to balance transit development and community space needs. And also just for, I think as the frequent transit network as a whole is trying to help accomplish um, better access and just the usability of existing transit and future transit in terms of travel times and ability to get there. Um, the UTA on demand service can help with that also. We do have a new survey, um, a second survey coming very soon uh, to our North Temple Mobility Hub website, which is shown on this slide. So we're really hoping that people will get out. Um, if you go to that website today and sign up with your email, you will be notified as soon as the survey goes out. And we would really love to hear um, people's feedback. We're gonna be asking questions about kind of the look and feel of the Mobility Hub as we move towards a preliminary design and also, feedback on what we've developed with the community for uh, guiding principles that will help guide the design and help us make sure that we're achieving as many goals as possible with the project. I think I've said enough about the North Temple Mobility Hub. Uh, so Eric, hopefully, uh, I think you have, yes, some nuts and bolts. Uh, yeah, thanks. So, um, you know, we've talked about a number of exciting things that are coming in terms of the transit system. And we just wanted to take a minute to talk about now, now that all of this transit is coming, how do I use it? How do I get on it? Um, so we do have a couple of different mechanisms um, that you can use, especially for Salt Lake City residents. We have the Hive Pass that you're eligible for. Um, as long as you have proof of residency, you can get a discounted rate. We also have our Fair Pay card, which is a value stored card. You can add money to it if you don't ride the bus all the time and a monthly pass doesn't make sense. You may be able to use a fair pay card. You can buy them at grocery stores, Walgreens, number of places that they're sold. You can also add value to them there or at the customer service office at UTA at Salt Lake Central Station. You can also add money Hi. online. Um, we also have discounted pass options available Hi. for seniors, students, and youth. Um, in addition, a number of uh, employers and schools do have partnerships with UTA to offer uh, discounted uh, or completely, um, they completely subsidize the pass so it's free for their students or for their employees. Um, we also have several apps. Uh, as Laura mentioned, you don't need to have an app to use the UTA on demand service uh, or to use UTA in general, but we do have se uh, several apps that may be useful to you as you use the transit system. Um, we have the GoRide mobile ticketing app. Uh, it allows you to buy tickets for different UTA services, as well as monthly passes on your phone. Um, so you don't have to use cash on the bus. You still can use cash on the bus, but you, you can also use this app. Um, and that's valid uh, proof of fare when you're on the bus or on the train. We also have the uh, transit app, which uh, does trip planning, lets you know when the buses are coming. Um, and so, that, and also helps you plan your schedule out in advance. Um, you, lets you track your bus in real time as well. You can see it on the map. And then we also have the UTA on demand app that uh, is a partnership with VIA, our service provider. And that app functions very similarly to Uber or Lyft. It uh, looks at your current location and where you want to go um, and schedules your trip on UTA on demand for you. And all of those apps are free to download. Um, and if you, have any questions while you're using them, you can always contact UTA customer service office um, and we can walk you through uh, exactly how they work. Um, but that's, we, we're trying to develop as many tools as we can to make the transit riding experience as accessible as possible and uh, make, make it so that people can use all of these transit options that we're providing. Okay, well that, that gives us, I think, from, from the, the project development perspective, I guess, uh, uh, kind of a heads up on what's coming, uh, what to plan for, how to use it. I just want to make a quick final plug to uh, call for feedback on a couple of our active uh, comment 
uh, opportunities right now. So the sixth and seventh north corridor vision is out, which is a culmination of um, over a year's worth of outreach and discussion. Uh, that's that's a concept that's available for comment. And you know we're thinking about the road reconstruct of that corridor, um, but also making sure that we're able to do short term upgrades like the bus stops that we talked about, and that's all going to be compatible. Um, Sue's talked about the North Temple Mobility Hub. We're also in the process of developing a, or updating our citywide transportation master plan. Um, and so look for opportunities coming up on that to help sort of guide um, policies and uh, visions that, that will affect the whole city, but also west side areas. And I just want to draw your attention to, to our, our west side projects uh, webpage where we've consolidated a lot of the stuff that we've talked about. There's even actually more up there trying to, um, you know, have it sort of serve as a one-stop shop so folks can, can go in and see uh, everything that's going on and, and, and stay updated that way without having to hunt and peck across the internet for all this stuff. So um, with that, I'll pass it back to Jasmine, take us into uh, the next section here. Thanks, Kyle, and thanks everybody for all of this amazing information that you guys have provided to the West Side community. I want to also remind you all um, that we will be hosting a West Side Community Resource Fair on November 13th, which is a Saturday from 11 to 3 p.m. at the Utah State Fair Park. This will be a great opportunity to come and learn about new resources or resources that are being offered to community members talk to some of these folks that you're hearing from today and provide um, feedback to them um, in person and to get some really yummy free food. And there'll also be um, flu and COVID vaccine um, options there for you as well. Um, don't forget if you want to stay up to date on any of these projects that we've been talking about today or other projects that are happening, make sure you visit rideuta.com or slc.gov slash transit. And you can always follow them on any of your social media platforms at SLC Moves and at Ride UTA. Um, and as we run in or go into questions and answers here, I want to also remind you all that we're still taking questions. Um, and if you've been asking questions, we'll get to them here in just a moment. But don't forget to keep adding your questions in the comment box below. Um, so that way we can get them answered by them today. And with that, we will start off our Q&A session first with a question for Laura. Um, how does UTA On Demand compare to other rideshare apps like Lyft and Uber? Thanks, that's a really good question. Um, so the main way in which it'll differ is that the technology that the service provider is using will match multiple riders headed in a similar direction to a single vehicle. Um, and then it will utilize routing that allows for quicker and efficient shared trips without lengthy detours or relying on you know, your typical fixed route schedules. Um, and these vehicles, you know, they're still public transportation. And so during um, COVID, masks will still be required. So you're, you know, you're sharing the vehicle like you would any other bus basically. Thanks, Laura, for clarifying all of that for us. Our next question comes from Nigel from Facebook. Um, where will the mobility hub be located and why not expanded, expand the hub on 600 West? Suze, I'm gonna pass that one to you. All right, sounds good. Um, yeah, I will kind of kick it off and I'll, I'll have Eric chime in too if that works, but um, we don't have a, an exact location yet um, for the new mobility hub. We Our study area that we're working with a consultant team on goes from uh, 900 West to Redwood Road, kind of right along the North Temple corridor, um, although we don't know exactly where it will be located or exactly if it will be on um, North Temple. But one of the reasons there is the obvious connection to the existing train, um, to the existing train line in terms of being able to connect people easily between bus and train and other travel modes. 
Um, and also because, well, I'm going to let Eric chime in a little bit on this, if you can, Eric, but um, the transit master plan does when it contemplates and talks about how to do the frequent transit network, it talks about the need for additional hubs above and beyond just the Salt Lake Central hub that's on 600 West. So this is one of the ways we're trying to fill that, um, fill that need as we expand service. That's correct. Um, you know, just looking at it from a travel perspective, you know, the, the current hub on 600 West is ideal for certain trips, especially if you're coming from the east side of the county into downtown. That's the right place to end a bus. But for some trips, you know, specifically from neighborhoods like Groves Park and Fair Park, if you're going downtown or if you're going uh, across the city or somewhere else besides specifically downtown, um, it doesn't make sense to stop off at that hub first and transfer somewhere else, if that makes sense, um, which is what we're currently asking passengers to do. It makes more sense to kind of, uh, to, to provide a more direct connection to some of those destinations. Um, and it also is, allows us for more flexibility uh, in scheduling the work of our bus drivers and giving them places to take breaks and use the bathroom. That is an underappreciated but very important part of transportation planning is making sure that bus drivers have time and, and a place to go to the bathroom. They're human and they need it. Um, so we, we always wanna make sure that we're very conscious of those needs. Um, and this is, this is also, as Susan mentioned, it's, a, it's an opportunity to capitalize on, on the, the chance to give some space to the community as well. You know, we, we doesn't mean that that, could be, that would be the only community space that we'd ever contemplate, but it's an opportunity to, to create transit connections as well as create a good uh, community gathering space. And not, not just at one hub, but at multiple dispersed hubs throughout the city. Thanks, Eric and Susan. Bathrooms are important, guys. Bus drivers need to go to the bathroom too. Um, my next question is for Kyle. You talked a little bit about improved bus stops. Um, when can residents expect to start seeing some of these improved bus stops or, or is that already happening? So the so working backward from when the service is going to open up, which is next fall in 2022, uh, we need to have those bus stops in place and we need to have them in place, you know, uh, several weeks or a couple of months in advance of the, the service opening so that um, we have time to train drivers on the routes um, and, you know, put the finishing touches, which inevitably take a little time to get done after the initial concrete work. So uh, all that to say is that we expect construction to start, uh, in some ways it's up to the contractor, but I would, I would estimate spring 2020, uh, so call it like as early as March and going through as late as July 2022. Um, if, if, that's, and if, if that's some of this is news to you, I understand we're in the process of doing some uh, public information and noticing, um, and this is part of what we're talking about today is, is of the first step in doing that, but we'll be sending out mailers and doing some um, flyering and, and other communication strategies so that people have a little bit of a heads up uh, with these new bus stops. Perfect, thanks, Kyle. Um, and my next question is for, I think it's for, gonna be for Eric, but Laura, you might need to chime in a little bit. Um, how are residents going to be notified of some of these new bus stop changes or if a stop that they're used to taking is going away or if a new one is coming? Sure, I can start off. Um, usually when we're having a change coming to a bus stop, we will post physical signage at said bus stop. Um, you know, we have some that say bus stop is moving from this location. And then sometimes we'll put ones out if um, there isn't currently a bus stop somewhere, but we're going to be adding ones and we'll have signs that say the new bus stop is coming to this location. Um, and that'll be several weeks, sometimes months in advance of the change happening so that regular riders have a chance to adjust to those changes and prepare for them. Um, and then there's also, <laughs> excuse me, and I think that Eric can probably speak a little bit more to this since it's a UTA service, but there are service updates, um, like texts or emails or, or some sort of notification system that, that riders can sign up for as well. 
Yeah, that's correct. Um, we do have service alerts you can sign up for on UTA website. You can get emails or texts uh, when there are any changes to routes or anything that affects uh, bus stops, detours, things like that, in addition to announcements about coming service changes. Um, I would add that um, all of these route changes that are proposed on the west side of Salt Lake City um, are going to be part of UTA's change day process as well for the August 2022 change day. Uh, meaning that there will be a public engagement with that. There will be a public hearing and a, a public comment process in the spring of 2022 as well. Um, and, you know, if there's specific questions, you know, we can take those at that time. You're also welcome to, um, you know, reach out on social media and, um, you know, we'll, we'll get those through our uh, PR and marketing group to, and our customer service group to make sure that we're um, answering any specific questions that my, people might have about bus stops in their area. Um, but we'll we'll try to have that information out, you know, on as many channels as possible in like the spring of 2022, so that we can uh, we can continue with uh, uh, this process of adding this service on the west side. Thanks, guys. So then my next question is for Susan. Um, I know we've already talked a little bit about expanding um, the 600 West hub and like why the mobility hub, but you also talked a little bit about some community space potentially being at the hub. What kind of options are you guys considering um, of putting there? That is a great question. Um, I think at this point we are, um, pretty open to ideas and options. We're trying to learn from the community what is maybe what, what's desired or what might be missing um, in the neighborhood or, or especially like on their commute or in their travels or, or something like that that we could connect um, to easily and try to include. Um, I am glad that we kind of revisited this for a minute because there is quite a, as probably most people know, there is quite a bit of um, investment and redevelopment happening um, in North Temple and along that corridor. It is a project area for the Salt Lake City Redevelopment Agency, which also um, means that there are additional to tools and resources available to developers and others in terms of financing options as well. So there's kind of um, there's kind of a lot that's in the mix and that we're trying to think about and trying to understand the partnerships that we can build, kind of the desires on the one hand and the partnerships that we can build um, to try to make it come together as best we can in a way that uh, seems feasible and seems helpful and that people would want to participate in and be part of. So that was a really broad answer, but I think the idea is that at least as far as I know right now, kind of all options are on the table. We're look, you know, we're, we're trying to understand um, outdoor space needs, indoor space needs, um, things that don't even take up space like Wi-Fi or charging, um, things like that, that, that people might be looking for. Thanks, Suze. And community members can still provide feedback on what they want, right, um, to see potentially visiting the um, SLC Westside Transit website? Yeah, absolutely. If you go to that website for Westside Projects um, and click on the North Temple Mobility Hub, or if you go to the North Temple Mobility Hub, website directly. Um, you can sign up to receive information and surveys and you can there's also just an open comment box. So we would love to hear what it is that you want to tell us <laughs> about this project or about this area. Thanks, Suze. And don't forget, guys, we're still taking your questions. Um, be sure to comment below in the comment box if you have any questions. And our next question comes from Ted from Facebook, um, where will the bus stops be located along 600 North? Yeah, I can help with that one. Um, so the, the new bus stops will go in on 6th North between uh, Redwood Road and 9th West. They're spaced about every block and a half um, along the corridor. Um, we, we haven't released maps showing the specific locations because some of that work is in draft format. Um, and so, you know, stops stations can shift a little bit if there's a utility conflict or something like that. Uh, generally, they're all in the park. Well, they're all in the park strips. 
Um, so they'll occupy uh, that park strip space. If uh, the, the bus stop is located, so we're gonna be also notifying adjacent property owners as part of our outreach process and, and, and working with those property owners to you know, tweak the designs and make them the best they can be and sort of balance uh, the needs. Because again, these, these stops are in the park strips along the corridor. And as you know, it's, it's all almost all entirely residential along that corridor. So yeah, there will be some homes that um, we'll see new, new bus stops real close to their house. So um, for those folks that are directly impacted, we'll be sure to uh, reach out directly. Thanks, Kyle. Um, my next question is for Eric. If a community member has an issue with a bus stop, like it's not clean or something's wrong with it, how do they voice their concern? So the fastest way to get a hold of us is to either reach out to us on social media, you know, either on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, um, any of our channels. Um, that inf that feedback will get passed to us, and we'll have our facilities team. Uh, go out and handle like bus stop maintenance if some if the trash needs to be taken out or something like that. Um, you can also call UTA's customer service line one eight 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 ride UTA, uh, or you can email us through the contact form on our website. Um, all of those get uh, passed directly to my office if they have to do with bus stops, and then I, I work with my team to make sure that we can get those uh, those comments addressed. Lost my mute button for a second, guys, or unmute button. Um, our next question is from Eric on social media. Where will UTA extend tracks further into Westside neighborhoods, Redwood Road area? Um, that is a great question. Uh, that's a question that we do get a lot at UTA. Um, we're happy that the main concern that a lot of people have is that they want more of UTA. Um, that's a that's a great uh, place for us to be. Um, and at this point, there's there are not any specific plans for tracks in the West Side neighborhoods, um, but there are a couple of places that you can look um, for information about future projects that we have. Um, we have the UTA five year service plan is on our website, um, and that does include um, these bus improvements that we're talking about. Basically, it's everything that happens in the next five years that we currently have funding for. Um, you can also look at the Regional Transportation Plan, which is on Wasatch Front Regional Council's website, which is wfrc.org. Uh, and that shows projects out to the next 30 years. Um, they have a rolling four-year process that they take feedback from the communities. They're actually working on their next plan right now. Um, so that's another good place to offer comments. Um, if you'd like to see projects like that in your neighborhood, um, they do have a number of transit expansion projects on there. Those aren't funded yet, but that's kind of what's in the plan for the next few decades. Um, part of our process with um, adding on-demand service and adding increased bus service is to monitor these routes very closely um, to see you know, at what point do we start seeing levels of demand um, where it makes sense to put uh, the investment dollars towards you know, either improved bus service or um, other modes like tracks. Um, one of the beautiful things about UTA On Demand is that it does let us um, see where everybody goes. You know, when you give people the chance to travel to any part of the neighborhood, where do they congregate, you know, versus just one bus line that people only use because that's the only bus line that they can. What, what do people do when we have the chance, uh, when they have the chance to go to any place within the neighborhood? So we have been tracking, you know, those travel patterns in our other UTA on-demand area that's been operating. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to study those closely and uh, work with Salt Lake City on uh, where we see emerging patterns of demand, where we start seeing um, lots of transit ridership kind of surging up or spiking. Um, that's very important to us to stay on top of that so that we can provide those needs to the community. But uh, that was kind of a long answer, but there are, there are several places that you can look for information on future projects. Thanks, Eric. Um, my next question is for Laura. How can those with a discounted fare pass utilize UTA on demand with their current discounted rate? Oh yeah, important question. 
Um, so folks who are eligible for discounts can reach out directly to UTA um, and UTA will provide them with a code that will permanently unlock discounted pricing for all trips that are booked through the UTA on demand service. Um, and so you can just call the UTA customer service department for that. Um, and then if you have like a Hive Pass or a student pass or any other existing UTA pass, um, those can be added within the app as well. Um, so I believe you don't have to call the customer service department for something like that. Um, you, there's a way to add those within, within the framework of the app and those will just be in there. You only have to do that one time and then it's connected. And is there specific information from like a student pass or like the physical bus pass um, they'll have to give to whoever they call to unlock the discounted price? Yeah, they would need to have, you know, their pass number um, in whatever whatever form it is um, and their, their information just showing that it's theirs. <laughs> gotcha. Thanks, Laura, for clarifying all of that for us. Our next question comes from Nigel from Facebook um, and is for Susan. Is the white ballpark a consideration for the mobility hub? Great, thanks Nigel. Um, we are, this hits on a point, right? That Salt Lake City and UTA, we don't have a location finalized. We don't have, we aren't, um, we don't have property that we own directly in order to at this point um, in the process. So, but we are working with property owners in the area um, as part of our technical advisory committee. So that does include the Fair Park who own the White Park property um, and who are you know, working on their own redevelopment plan for that area. So they are part of the process and part of our team as we try to you know, move forward with what will eventually become a preferred location and um, any partnerships or property ownership that goes along with that. I don't know if Eric, if I don't know if you have anything to add on that, but. Um, I was just thinking, you know, we, we are still in a process of studying that area and picking, you know, what would be the best place to put the, the mobility hub. Um, but that certainly doesn't mean that we're not excited about and not encouraging um, other development projects or, or other improvement projects along that corridor, it all ties together. Um, and even if we, um, even, even if the one location isn't specifically selected for the mobility hub, um, we still expect that uh, having a mobility hub on that corridor will allow people to use transit to get to a variety of locations on that corridor and, and hopefully um, foster some of that new development and, and new improvements along North Temple as well. Thanks, guys. Follow up question for that. When a location has been decided, will you guys be letting the public know or how will that all be communicated? That's a great question. Thanks, Jasmine. Yeah, when we when so the study that we're working on right now with Salt Lake City and UTA and we have a consultant team on board, um, part of the scope of that study is going to be to decide upon a preferred location and to also create an initial concept design. So we will be able to share that with the public when we have, um, when we're that far along in the process or, or when we're finished with that study, um, that will be something that we can share as far as I know, <laughs> in terms of where we are with, with our plan and, and how we're gonna try to move forward with it. Thanks, Susan. All right, we still have a few minutes left in our hour, so don't forget to comment your questions below so we can have them answered here today. Um, my next question is also for Eric. I feel like we're picking on you a little bit, but I wanted to get some more information about how, if somebody doesn't have one already, can sign up for a Hive Pass. I can actually jump in on that one. Um, Go ahead, Lara. Yeah, unless that's... you were really excited about it, Eric. <laughs> Um, so it is, it's a little bit of a process, unfortunately, um, and as a reminder, the Hive Pass is only available to folks who live within Salt Lake City boundaries, um, and it is a half price UTA pass, um, and it's eligible on all services except for Front Runner, um, Ski Bus, um, and Express Services, 
yeah, express services. Um, <laughs> Um, but the way that it works is you will go to ridewithhive.com and then there is a way to sign up on our website. Um, it is, you have to send in two proofs of residency, again, to show that you're a Salt Lake City resident because Salt Lake City um, partially subsidizes these classes. Um, and you just have to put in all of your information, send in that residency verification and our wonderful public utilities office will verify that you live within Salt Lake City boundaries and then they will get a high pass sent out to you. Um, and you can sign up for a month at a time. Um, you can pay in advance for however many months or for a full year. Um, you can set up auto pay so you don't even have to think about it uh, month after month. So it's a, once you have it, it's, it's pretty easy. It's just, there's a little bit of um, extra leg work to do up front to get a hold of the pass in the first place. Or you can go um, call the public utilities office again if you don't want to register online or if you don't have a way to upload your, your residency documents. Um, it's a little bit you know funky during COVID, but they'll they'll come out to the to the front of the office if you need to physically give them any documents and we make it work. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Good to know that there are other options just in case there aren't some tech savvy people out there. Um, our next question is for Eric with UTA on demand coming online, what bus routes will be changing? I don't know, Laura did such a good job on that last one. Maybe I'll pass this one over to her. Just, just kidding, just kidding. Um, uh, so this answer is per the current five-year service plan, uh, which again, you can find on UTA's website. Um, so this, this could, you know, this is still, as I mentioned before, subject to public hearing, public comment process. So there could be some adjustments to this. Um, but uh, we have the UTA on-demand service starting in December, and then we've proposed the bus changes to happen in August. And what that will consist of is having the, the new Route 1 that, that uh, will be a brand new route and the extended Route 205 come into these neighborhoods. Uh, that will replace the current service on routes 519 and 520. So those routes would not run anymore, um, as well as routes 919 and 920, which are the West High trips from uh, Rose Park and Fair Park. The, both routes 1 and 205 will come within a block of West High School. Um, and so that, that will be um, convenient service for that, that location, as well as UTA On Demand can also be used to, to get there. Um, then we also have uh, Route F522 is a flex route that travels on 2200 West. Um, that will be replaced by the on-demand service. And then there will also be some adjustments to Route 217, um, which currently, uh, which serves Redwood Road. It currently goes uh, through the neighborhood all the way up to 1700 North. Um, route 217 would be replaced in part by Routes 1 and 205 on Redwood Road, and that route would end at uh, North Temple and eventually would end at the, the new mobility hub. So that route will be a little bit shorter. We'll have the new routes 1 and 205 that will replace routes 519, 520, 919, and 920 that currently run through the neighborhood. And then route F522 is replaced with the on-demand service. That was a lot of numbers, um, but you, you can look at the, the five-year service plan or you can also reach out to UTA if you have questions. Or play the recording back in slow-mo. He's a service planner, folks. He knows this stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Eric. Well, I think we are at the end of our time, but I want to remind you all that you can always learn more and stay up to, up to date on all of these projects and all of the other projects that are happening on the West Side by visiting um, slc.gov slash transportation slash West Side dash projects um, to provide your input and get all of the updates. Um, and remember, you can always engage with um, Salt Lake City and UTA by social media, um, by adding them, or you can always email. So there's plenty of lines of communication, but I do wanna just um, end here and give our panelists an opportunity to send off any parting messages they wanna give to you all. We hope to see you all at the event on November 13th. You can talk to us all in person instead of on through a screen. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Thanks I was going to second that. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, thank you, Laura, for reminding us. Don't forget to show up on November 13th at the Utah State Fair Park. And with that, I think that's a wrap, guys. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.